Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where all motoring fans can relive the histories of standout cars in Australia. In each episode, we find out how our feature car performed both on the road and in competition. We'll also meet a proud owner and get the latest market news from the Shannon's auctions team. In today's episode, we look back on the magnificent German sedan that showed the world it was unmatched for quality and endurance. The Mercedes-Benz W123. The W123 was the next Mercedes-Benz model range to appear after the immensely influential and successful W116 S-Class. There was a general international view that the S-Class Mercedes-Benz was the best sedan money could buy. For many, it followed that the new W123 with four and six cylinder injected petrol engines and a diesel four, which shared some of this technology, was the best medium sedan in the world. Within nine months of the launch, a black market had developed in Germany, but these cars arrived in Australia at an unfortunate time. From the 1st of July 1976, the punitive ADR27A emissions legislation had a detrimental effect on the performance of almost every new vehicle sold here. With their relatively small engines and heavy bodies, Mercedes suffered more than some others. Even the flagship 280E was no fireball. One wonders what the local Mercedes executives would have thought when they read a comparison test in the June 1979 edition of Wheels, which saw the Holden Commodore SLE victorious. Having owned two VB SLEs and done plenty of kilometres in W123s, I find it impossible to agree with this conclusion. Mark, mm. performance was a dirty word yeah. in 1976, but did the W123 have a future in motorsport? Well, it did. I mean, not in touring car racing, obviously, with its size and its weight, its power to weight ratio, but there was a long distance rally held not long after its launch, which left everyone in no doubt that this was arguably the greatest sedan in the world, which I'll get to a bit later. The W123 boasted stronger roof pillars, notched front frame members for more control crumpling in a crash, and the fuel tank was relocated over the rear axle to provide a more absorbent rear end. Constant evolution marked the life of the W123. In another comparison, where the four-cylinder 230E outscored the Holden Statesman Rover 3500 and newly launched Volvo 760, Wheels editor Peter Robinson wrote, the performance it delivers is quite outstanding given the car's 1480 kilo mass. In fact, it is worth noting that the 230E proved more accelerative than the 280E with 112 kilowatts we tested in 1979. There were also wagon and coupe versions with production starting the following year. We had become accustomed to hefty prices for Mercedes, and it is interesting that the Jaguar XJ6 at $42,500 was priced roughly midway between the 230E and the 2.8 litre six cylinder 280E sedans, while the 280CE coupe commanded more than 50,000. But the quality was outstanding. Mark, I'm thinking that the high quality of the W123 must have been a factor in the 280E's greatest motorsport success, yeah. was it? Yeah, it certainly was. And that quality and endurance was on display all the way from London to Sydney. In pre-war and early post-war Grand Prix and sports car racing, Mercedes-Benz was renowned for the engineering and organisational firepower behind the success of its legendary Silver Arrows. More than two decades later, having quit motor racing following the 1955 Le Mans disaster, the Stuttgart firm proved it had lost none of its sporting efficiency with an emphatic victory for its new six-cylinder 280E in the 1977 London to Sydney Rally. The German Mark not only won the arduous 30,000 km event, but the winning car, crewed by 1968 London to Sydney Marathon winners Andrew Cowan and Colin Malkin with Mike Broad, led home another 280E to underline its dominance. Although Cowan's car was one of six identical 280E sedans prepared and supported by the factory, none were official works entries. 
This was a similar but far more committed approach than its low-key involvement in 1968. And it almost guaranteed itself victory in the world's longest and toughest car rally thanks largely to peerless vehicle preparation and event support. John, you know, clearly a large chunk of that victory was achieved before the event even started. Well, I guess that was the Teutonic thoroughness for which Dame Le Benz was famous. And, and particularly like in the 30, 1930s with Alfred Neubauer yes. running the Grand Prix operation. I guess that, that culture lived on in the, in the company, didn't it? Very much so. I mean, yeah, look at some of the logistical tricks. You know, they, yeah, other cars had to run on really low-grade petrol you know, through the Middle East sections. They had fuel tankers with high-octane fuel at every refuelling stop, so the cars never had to run on lousy fuel, this sort of stuff. And didn't you say something about they had people in Australia to open and close the gates just for their cars, exactly. not for anyone else's? Incredible. And they, they even had a Unimog sitting beside notoriously long sandy patches with a crew just sitting there. They were only there to rescue the Mercedes Benz if they got stuck. So while the cars were getting stuck in the sand, they're just standing there looking there. How are you going? Yeah. <laughs> nice day. I mean, it was just incredible from start to finish. The yeah. logistics of what they did, you know, it was just incredible. Well, you'd have to say they deserved to win. Exactly. And the car was the right car. It was up to the job. Yeah, 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 exactly. The London to Sydney provided the perfect stage on which to promote the superb engineering of its new mid-sized W123 series. The pride of the fleet was the sporty 280E, which with a lusty 2.8 litre fuel injected inline six and supple four coil suspension could cover vast distances over rugged terrain with great comfort. The factory prepared rally cars were close to showroom standard, but stripped bare and rebuilt with surgical attention to detail. This included most prominently those big dual purpose bumper bars, which could be quickly detached and used as wheel tracks in mud or soft sand. As expected, the 280Es set a formidable pace. The canny Scott Cowan chose to hold back a little in the early running to preserve his car, just as he had done in 1968. He surged into the lead during the final leg across Australia to lead British teammates Tony Folkes and Peter O'Gorman to the finish at the Sydney Opera House. Winning the longest car rally in history was a testament to the German Mark's engineering and organisational overkill but also a crushing demonstration of the durability and sporting qualities of its W123 series sedan, which in 280E specification proved to be a world beater. Remember to join the Shannons Club, where you can connect with other enthusiasts around the country. My name is Frank Whitfield. I have my two W123 Mercedes-Benz 300TD station sedan, 1981, and a 1985 280CE coupe. I purchased the 280CE in January 2013. I've always liked the coupes. This one came up and I had to snap it up straight away. It was in beautiful condition, just like it is now. It just needed a good polish, a little bit of a touch up here and there. My 300 TD wagon has been a faithful friend since I purchased it in 1983. And it's been my car ever since. It's still my daily driver. And it's a delightful car to own. And uh, like myself, now it's retired. They were really well built, very reliable. In the days that they built these cars, the paint is very, very thick as thick as a lot of the metal on modern cars. It's a 2.8 litre, six cylinder engine, fuel injected, twin overhead camshaft. I just get in it and drive it and enjoy it. And I'd go anywhere at all in either cars. It just drives beautifully. It's a very economical vehicle. It's not hard to get eight litres per 100 kilometres. The comfort and the ride quality is really good, wonderful to drive. Its reliability and qualities are unsurpassed. I've been a Shannon's member since 1990. I've never had any problems at all with Shannon's, most pleased. I'll keep them as long as I can. I really like cars and I just don't see any reason to sell them. They're just darn good cars.
Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon is here with all the latest on the Mercedes-Benz W123 series. Welcome, Hi, Hi. Welcome, Chris. The, uh, the W123 was almost certainly the best medium-sized sedan mm. in the world at the time. Mm. Is that reflected in the classic car market today? Interesting. Good question. Though. I, mm. I think uh, you know we obviously saw many of them on the road when they were new. Um, today, if anything, we probably see the uh, coupe variant, which it's held its value pretty well. So the two hundred and eighty CE coupes mm. have done very well. Um, you know, they're probably what we see across the blocks uh, at Shannon's. So they come up for sale uh, on a regular basis. The sedans we don't really see uh, at auction. Really, I think a lot of them are, you know, were probably driven and run down, and most of them you see today have got over three hundred or four hundred thousand yeah. k's on the yeah, clock. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. yeah. And the wagons had had their own market themselves. Uh, I think they're quite popular as a second family car to have. Well, that's uh, a pretty unusual yeah. sort of a thing, isn't it, to have mm. a Mercedes Benz wagon? Yeah, I yep. think you know it would be a bit. A, a, a bit of fas a fashion statement, really, to have something. It, like it was, that. wasn't yeah. it? And I think it's the one that you also saw passed down to the the kids eventually yeah. uh, down the track. And uh, so, so, if you can find one of those uh, with low Ks, it's quite an interesting variant. Mm. So, so what's the picking order then? From what you're saying, you're saying that uh, coupe most desirable, absolutely, and then yeah, the yeah. wagon ahead of the sedan. I nearly think the wagon probably ahead of a sedan. So why, why is that? Do you I, think, I think probably because of a rarity of a good wagon today. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, we, we live in a culture where the wagons are quite an acceptable, quite a, it's fashionable, as John just mentioned, it's yeah. fashionable to and have a wagon. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. Volvo, we can, maybe we can, <laughs> we can thank <laughs> Volvo for that. Um, and uh, Christoph, the 230E with the four-cylinder engine, mm. is that... Is there any difference in value between that and the six-cylinder? Do you think, or oh, look, I think the six-cylinder is probably uh, you know mm. a, a little bit better and um, you know a little bit more power torque. Uh, they're, they're their perception, you know, given yeah. the build quality of these cars and their curb weights, yes. their perception that the 2.3 was perhaps a little underdone. Yeah, yeah probably a little bit under, but uh, again, I think it's about finding the right car, uh, mm. right service history, uh, low Ks, uh, and, and condition, obviously. And so in terms of sedans, the most desirable sedans, we've been talking about uh, Cowan's victory in the London to Sydney, the yes. 280E, would that sound like so. that's the yeah. one to get? In that range in W123, I would, I would say so, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's, that's got to be a practical classic, doesn't it? I mean, it's great performance for yeah. that inline six, but also all that room, that space yeah. and the big yeah. boot. So yeah. these yeah. are very practical classics, aren't Practical they? and affordable. Mm. I mean, you know, you don't have to pay a lot of money for yeah. a sedan today, so yeah. I think that's probably the key to it. I yeah. don't think they suffered nearly as badly from rust as a lot of cars mm. of that era, did they? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think mm. if they were, again, garaged correctly in the period, no, they didn't. Uh, yeah. If they were left outside, yes, yeah. they would obviously yes. suffer from some yeah. of the rust issues. Um, but again, it's about finding something that's been well maintained, yeah. being mm. garaged, being yeah. looked after. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's quite a, a usable and, and affordable classic. Maybe one for the future. It Perhaps. could be. I think mm. there's plenty of support with Mercedes-Benz yeah. and mm. uh, especially with that era. Uh, you know, there you, you see a lot at the, um, you know, the wreckers or salvage mm. yards. Yeah. So I think parts are readily available for those. Oh, that's great. All right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. No problem, and for all the latest on Shannon's auctions, check out the Shannon's Club website. John, it's interesting, you know, as we reflect on the, the W123 series, comments at the time, and it was quite widespread, this was the best sedan in the world that you could buy at the time. Do you, do you agree with that? Well, I, I came in with the W124, its successor, as the mm. best sedan in the world, but it's got to do with the timing of launches. I don't think the W123 was better than the W116S class, but they were contemporaneous, whereas yeah. the, the W124 came out kind of in between S classes. Mm. But I do think, unquestionably, the W123 was far and away the best car made anywhere in the world of that size or of that type. I mean, you look at the BMWs of the, of the period or mm. anything else, really, they, they didn't compare. The way the car was built, the journalists used to love to say over-engineered like no other car, but the engineers really had a major influence in the way the cars were produced. It wasn't the marketing people mm. played a secondary role, really. I think that, that really characterised Mercedes-Benz for so long. It did. Um, particularly after the war, where the, just the, the quality of the car... People didn't mind the car being over-engineered because it was so outstanding, you really knew what you were getting for your money. Sir William Lyons took exactly the opposite approach. He squeezed the suppliers on mm. the price to get the get car the out as down. inexpensive 
expensively as possible mm. and owners paid for that. Mm. Well, I think the W123 series on, on you know, reflection is right at the pinnacle of that era, wasn't it? That it, engineering era. It represents era. the yeah. epitome yeah. of Mercedes-Benz at its glorious best, I think. Absolutely. Well yeah. said. We hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the truly magnificent Mercedes-Benz W123 series. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.